In this video, I'll show you how I approach a knee MRI. Do you know what this muscle is here? Please comment below. Pause the video now and comment below. I will show you the answer at the end of this video. When I assess an EMRI, I always describe findings in each compartment separately, starting off with the middle compartment. First, I have a look at the bone. I describe any bone marrow edema or other bone abnormalities. Then I have a look at the cartilage on both sides. The next structure is then the meniscus, the medial meniscus from the posterior horn to the anterior horn. Then I have a look at the medial collateral ligament. Next is the Baker cyst to check whether there is one or not. And while you're here, you can have a look at the pes anserinus with the different tendons, whether there is bursitis, like in this case. Also, have a look at the medial compartment in your other orientations here in the sagittal view because sometimes these cartilage defects are located way in the back and you can only see them if you look at this specific plane. The same is true for meniscus lesions as well. Once you have finished the medial compartment then the next thing you want to look at is the lateral compartment. And here again it's the same approach. You have a look at the bone, then you describe any findings in the cartilage, then the next structure I look at is the meniscus, again on different planes. You can have a look at the posterior lateral structures and I have made a separate video about that. You can find the link up in the upper right corner of your screen. Then you want to have a look at the popliteus tendon and the lateral collateral ligament. While at it also have a look at the proximal tibiofibular joint here, whether there is osteoarthritis or any ganglion abnormalities or stuff like that. Then you can go to the iliotibial band, check whether there is any abnormalities either at the insertion or between the iliotibial band and the lateral femoral condyle. The next compartment you want to look at is the central compartment and here you have the anterior cruciate ligament with its two bundles and the posterior cruciate ligament and also the Humphrey and Riesberg ligament. It is very important not to forget to look at the ACL also in your axial view because sometimes these tears are at the most cranial portion or at the origin here and it's so much easier to see a tear here on your axial view. I will make a video about that in the future. So make sure you have a look at your axils and follow the ligament all the way down. Also have a look at the Hoffa fat pad here because sometimes you see abnormalities here such as the arthrofibrosis, cyclops lesion, sometimes loose bodies or in post-operative cases anteriorly displaced fragments or parts of a ACL graft. The last compartment you want to look at is the femoral patellar compartment. Again, you have a look at the bone, whether there is bone marrow edema, osteoarthritis, describe any cartilage defects, have a look at the amount of joint effusion, if there is any, then have a look at the extensor tendons. Don't forget the quadriceps tendon because it's a very important structure. Also, give a look at the fat pads. Um, best sequence to use is a fluid sensitive fat saturated sequence such as this, you want to have a look at the suprapatellar fat pad and the prefemoral fat pad here. Also have a look at the Hoffa fat pad and the ligamentum patella, especially at the origin and the insertion. If you assess the Hoffa fat pad, always make sure you check the suprolateral aspect and by suprolateral I mean this uppermost lateral part here between the lateral femoral condyle and the patellar tendon. And in this case, there is edema in the suprolateral Hoffa fat pad, and you can also appreciate this here. And this is consistent with a suprolateral Hoffa impingement, also known as patellar tendon lateral femoral condyle friction syndrome, and it's quite a common source of anterior knee pain. Also, make sure not to forget the subcutaneous tissues here because sometimes you have bursitis either 
here or down here. Now, the last thing you want to have a look at is the popliteal or the popliteal structures. Check for any abnormalities in the musculature because there are some variants that can be predisposing factors for a popliteal entrapment syndrome. And sometimes you see muscle edema or uh, tiny muscle injuries such as delayed onset muscle soreness or even small muscle strains. And that's about it. Now let me show you the answer to the name of this muscle here. First of all, you can appreciate its long orientation. It's actually the same signal intensity as other muscle as well. In the axial view, you can see that there are several different bundles coming from proximal to distal and here inserting into the synovial recess of the suprapatellar recess. And the name of this muscle is the articularis genus muscle. It can have several bundles and typically originates from the femur shaft anteriorly and then is running down here inserting into the synovial membrane and it is believed that its function is actually to pull the recess, the suprapatellar recess during knee extension to prevent impingement of the, of the recess in the femoropatellar joint. Did you already know about the articularis genus muscle? I didn't for a long time, I must admit. And that's it for today. Thanks for watching and make sure to subscribe and also hit the like button.